Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. And if you're celebrating Easter over the weekend, I hope you had a good one. Got to see some family, got to do some fun stuff. Um, so hopefully it was an enjoyable time for you. But uh, we're back at it now and in the last episode or last few episodes we've gone ahead and actually created this notion of categories here. Uh, an ability for the user to add the categories and then this under the hood exists as two separate or exists as a new table here a uh, pretty simple table but we do have our category uh, entities stored in room and we do have our item entities stored in room and then when we pull them out we actually merge the two together so all of these categories or sorry all of these items should have categories associated with them if the user wants to do that so um, yeah under the hood, they actually are connected at the moment, but we kind of want to, or at least I want to update the UI here so that they can either update whatever category it's, they're associated to in the update screen, or if they're here because they are adding a new item, you know, it's the same screen, so want to provide the same ability there for the user to basically select the category that they want to select at that moment in time, and then they can go ahead and save it to the database. So I've gone ahead here and uh, done just a little bit here. I've added a, a, an epoxy recycler view to our uh, add item entity layout file, added another little text view to kind of fall in line with what we have been building here as far as like these different sections in the UI. Um, and I'm excited to actually implemented the staggered grid layout manager or plan to at least. Uh, never used it before, but I think it's pretty nice looking. So um, I'm excited to see how that turns out. We have a span count of two and a horizontal orientation. So we're gonna have a horizontally scrolling list of staggered items in a grid fashion. So um, this small segment of building this functionality out might extend past one video. So if you're interested in that, please come back for more. Please feel free to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up here if uh, this, in, this content is interesting to you. So on top of that, We've gone ahead and just created a very simple uh, layout for each of our items that's going to exist in the epoxy recycler view. Gone ahead and basically wrapped a text view in a card view here. And my thought process was the stroke color we could change programmatically based upon, you know, if that item is selected or not. Uh, if that category is the one that is selected or not, right? So if there's 10 categories and one of them selected, there should be nine that are kind of that simple grayish normal color and then uh, the one that is selected will have the text color changed and the stroke color on the card view changed just to provide a little bit of theming and, and hopefully when we use it in the UI we'll see um, we'll kind of you, you'll get the feel that that is the selected item. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and maybe well I don't even think we need it uh, we'll see if we need it later. Okay, so uh, on top of that, there's one thing that I wanted to just touch on here. Inside of our base class, I added a little helper function here uh, to get our attribute color because previously, you know, you could get colors very easily that were defined in your colors.xml file. However, we've kind of been working off of this, you know, idea of theming and material theming and this primary, on primary, uh, secondary, on secondary color and all this kind of... Um, uh, I guess, you know, proper theming uh, idea here. So you could see here, you know, the stroke color is that question mark attribute to reference a particular attribute, not a certain color. Uh, so I needed a way to programmatically do the exact same, and this function uh, will hopefully get us there. I found it on Stack Overflow, and it looks pretty straightforward, but we added it to the base fragment here so that if we want it available to us in all of our other implementation fragments, we can do that. Um, and then I was kind of thinking about how to actually implement this screen, right? And what I want to accomplish here is I want to build our first, not our first, but I guess a little bit of a more in-depth way of accomplishing the data-driven UI um, and doing so via a view state. So. I'm actually just going to add this class in here. I might clean it up after the fact, but we're, I'm going to name it the add item um, categories view state. Yeah, that's horrible, I know, but 
It's all I got right now. So um, uh, my thought process here is that this single object is what's going to be returned in a live data. It's going to be what we are observing. And then this data here should encapsulate all the information that we need in order to uh, build the UI appropriately, right? So we can say is loading. We'll set that to false. Um, and then I'm going to just build another small uh, data class in here. Uh, called item for lack of a better term, but this is going to have our category entity within it, but also a piece of crucial information uh, is selected, right? And that's going to be a Boolean that is false. This could just be an empty category entity. Uh, I like creating defaults for our uh, data classes. Uh, hmm. And that's because this doesn't have defaults. Anyway, I like to set data classes to have defaults so that you can kind of just um, create them willy-nilly and if you're in an empty state you can kind of handle it but uh, I don't know anyway that, that's just me um, and then we're gonna have to we're gonna say our particular item here is of type item which equals an item. Uh, okay so if we would imagine this object here getting surfaced to our view layer when you know via uh, live data, so we're observing this, we could very easily find uh, you know okay is this is this state is this section of the UI loading uh, right and we have this little recycler view here, so we could add a, a loading state if that is the case. Now we're not really dealing with networking, so any bit of loading is not really going to take very long. Uh, so I think we might just not worry about that for now. However, um, just for the discussion, I think it's worth having. Uh, and then we're going to have our little item here, which is just a wrapper around the fact that we have a single category entity, um, and then it is selected. And the more that I think about this, the more I realize I need a list of items, and that will just be an empty list. Right, okay, so now this makes more sense. So the overarching view state, you know, are we in a loading state? Sure, you could do the same thing for an error state, uh, and then our item list is uh, going to have all of our information here. So in the, uh, we could see here we have, what is that, four and seven categories. So this would be a list of size seven. And whichever one of these categories is selected will have this Boolean flip to true. So then we can, and we will, in our epoxy controller, build our screen dynamically and basically just, you know, if this particular item is selected, then we set the text this way. Otherwise, we don't. Uh, we just set it the other way here. So we need a way to surface this to the um, to the view layer, right? Okay. So I've gone ahead and actually just renamed this here: categories view state. Hopefully that'll make sense. Um, and then uh, I, I just want to briefly talk about this as well here. This is a little bit of a pattern to uh, you know provide. Well, without, without getting too far into it, uh, you know, basically the fact that all of these objects here are mutable live data, that actually means that the people who are observing them, right, in the uh, view layer can actually change the data that exists in the live data, which is just, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world because you have to actively do that in order for it to kind of mess things up, but it's just good practice to basically only surface, you know, a live data object instead of a mutable live data object, because the view layer should just be consuming, right? It shouldn't actually be modifying the live data directly. Uh, we will actually get into this in the next episode of how we can communicate uh, an event in the view layer to actually change the data under the hood. Uh, and so that would actually just happen again because of that architecture that we're following. That would happen from the view layer into the view model itself, uh, you know, via a function instead of them, you know, the view layer being able to actually just modify the particular live data that they're looking at. Point being that this is just a way for us to do that. We have a private instance of a mutable live data, so our view layer is not going to be able to see this variable. However, they are going to be able to see this variable, which is simply a live data, and it just points to the mutable live data, the content that's within there. So it just helps, um, I guess, 
round out certain parts of the application um, or certain like paradigms inside of the MVVM and best practices inside of the MVVM architecture. So I figured, you know, we're going through the view state idea, might as well also introduce this here a little bit um, so that now we can kind of really dive into the meat and potatoes of what it has to offer, how it works, and just, you know, why it is, um, I guess, the, a, a clean way to manage this information. Right, so the, okay, so we have our live data set up here. We have our class that's going to go ahead and uh, basically model the state of that particular UI, the view state, so that's very good. Now we need a way to not only, you know, we have our vehicle that we're going to surface this to the, um, to the view layer, but now we need a way to generate this information and post it to that vehicle, right? So I'm going to add a function here that we're going to use in two instances, and I'm going to say on uh, category selected, and this is going to contain the category ID, which is a string. And like I said, this will happen in two places, which we'll dive into in, in a second. Okay, so basically within here we now have our category that has been selected and now we just want to build this particular uh, view state for our live data. So the first thing we can do here is we can create like a loading view state if we want and that's going to be the category view state and is loading is going to equal true and that's it that's all that we need and then we are just going to simply post this right so we have our category view state, we're going to post that uh, the loading view state. And we could inline this if we wanted to and whatnot, but this will essentially just post the is loading. So on the at the view layer, we should be handling that. And then we can do our stuff here. So if we were to traditionally be making network calls at this point, this is a pretty good idea so that we provide some feedback to the user. What we need to do is we actually need to get all of our categories. So if we just go ahead and say categories equals, now we have a live data here that we can uh, tap into. Nope, sorry, did not mean to do that. So we can say categories, category entities live data, uh, value and Let's say, yeah, we'll just leave it as categories, but this is nullable. So at the time where it is null, let's just go ahead and return from here. Uh, so now at this point, we have our entire list of categories. So we have our category ID, we have our list of categories, so we can very easily create this uh, view state. Our item, or let's be explicit here, view state item list is going Nope, sorry. Oh boy, can't type today, I apologize. Is going to be an array list of our items, which exist inside of there. Then for each of our categories here, we are going to loop through them and we are going to say view state item list add. Uh, we need an item object, which is going, excuse me which is going to contain the category entity, which is just going to be it. And then is selected is going to equal if it dot ID equals our category ID. Now when this is done running here, we're going to go ahead and uh, post our information. I'll do it here again. So this is going to be our view state is going to be the category view state is loading is going to be false which it already defaults to so in this case our item list is going to be the view state item list and then we are just simply going to post it right so okay let's talk about this for a second because it's pretty important uh, we can use named variables first right off the bat just want to refresh anyone if they're unfamiliar with what's going on we can use named variables here to basically only modify the uh, the the data class's default values. So that's why even though this object has two parameters in its constructor, we only need to provide one of them. Uh, and we can actually provide none of them because they have default values if we wanted to. Uh, so for our different use cases, we can just basically modify what we need, right? So our loading view state, we say is loading true, we post it to the live data. Boom, 
the observer, whoever's listening to it, will see that, we'll check if it's loading, and if so, we'll handle it accordingly. Then we're gonna go ahead and uh, fetch our categories here. Once we have our categories, we're going to populate a list with all of those categories, and this little tidbit of logic is actually going to be how we can modify each individual uh, item in our list to either show that it is selected or that it is not selected, right? So we are only allowing the user at this moment in time to select a single category and a single category only. Maybe down the line we can add in if the category is, um, you know, it, like they can select multiple and also this doesn't support the ability for the user to unselect a particular category um, because if they just continuously tap the same category they're going to be passing in the same category ID so they'll just kind of be selecting the same one so maybe we could either uh, we, we could change that in here or we can do something else uh, down the line which I have a little bit of an idea for um, so sorry I digress but we have our list of items properly formatted after this then we just go ahead and build the view state that is actually going to represent the UI and then we post that to our live data. So I think this is a pretty good place to stop. If there's any questions, please feel free to drop something in the comments. I'll be happy to answer some stuff, but this is most definitely, and hopefully you can see how this is really starting to shape up and kind of lay the foundation for um, the, the, the view layer, right? And from my personal experience, whether it was in, you know, uh, professional development, side projects, personal stuff, whatever the case is, if you get your data layer right, it makes everything else much easier. So it's worth spending some time here. It's worth spending some time to think these things through and understand what's going on. And then the view layer is just, you know, the facade that you put on top of the data. But having properly structured data to accomplish what you want is imperative to building an intelligent and well-rounded and easy to maintain application. So that's exactly what we're doing here. In the next episode, I'm very excited to connect to this, uh, this function up here to our view layer, connect our live data up to our view layer, and go from there to actually accomplish the UI and interaction that we want. So I will catch you in the next one.